Hello everybody, welcome back to Calculus. Today we will be talking about L'Hopital's Rule. Yes, it is called L'Hopital's Rule, is how it's pronounced. Uh, not Le Hospital Rule, uh, because it is French. Uh, in addition to that, we will also go back a little bit and talk about the indeterminate forms of calculus. So, uh, going back to, I think it was like chapter 1, the very beginning of calculus, uh, we are actually, I kind of uh, introduced what is known as the 7 deadly sins of calculus, not of anime. Uh, what that means is whenever you see these scenarios, whenever you do a direct substitution, you're basically going to run into trouble. And the way to remedy that type of trouble would be to do some sort of uh, algebra to get our way out of it or maybe to plug it into calculator. So uh, just to refresh your memory, uh, anytime you get 0 over 0, uh, infinity over infinity or with a positive or negative sign, 0 times infinity, infinity minus infinity, 0 to the 0, 1 to the infinity or 0 to uh, sorry infinity to the, the 0 power uh, anytime you encounter any one of those uh, then that means that we have to basically figure out another way to solve for it um, I would like to try not to use a calculator if possible so uh, then that's basically what this L'Hopital's rule is going to be for so here are some examples of where you would run into uh, something with L'Hopital's rule. Uh, so here in the first case, maybe we have something like, say, limit as x approaches towards 1 of ln of x uh, divided by x minus 1. Now, for some of these, uh, we learned along the way that we know actually how to solve for these because they represent the definition of derivative. Not all of them represent the definition of derivative, uh, but some of them do. Like, say, for example, in this case right here, uh, I could solve for it by saying, oh, if I write uh, minus ln of 1 over here, just as kind of like a placeholder, you can see that this right here is a definition of derivative where it's saying, hey, f of x is equal to ln of x, and I want to go ahead and take the derivative at x equals 2, 1. So ln of x, the derivative is 1 over x, and if I want to solve for f prime of 1, the answer is going to be equal to 1. So that's what the limit is. Um, in the second case, kind of same thing, right? Uh, we learned uh, from the very early on that the limit as x approaches towards 0 for sine of x over x, that is supposedly equal to 0. We did it by a proof using geometry and using the squeeze theorem. But also, uh, we can kind of look at it like the first one over here too, because if you recognize it, limit as x approaches towards 0 of sine of x minus sine of 0, which is 0, divided by x minus 0, hey, that's also a definition of derivative. It's saying my function f of x is equal to sine of x, and then I want to take its derivative, and then which is equal to cosine, and I'm going to plug in 0 in this case. So f prime of 0 is then equal to cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So if they come out to be something that is uh, not nice, uh, then we uh, recognize them as formal definition derivative, and that's how we were able to solve for limit. But unfortunately, sometimes, a lot of the times, it's not going to be that case. Maybe you have something this nasty right here uh, on the left-hand side, or maybe something this nasty with like uh, 8 to the x minus 5 to the x all divided by x. So the question is, how do you use this L'Hopital's rule to solve for these type of limits? Well, here's what L'Hopital's rule first says, and then we can go ahead and do a derivation. L'Hopital's rule. It says that suppose that we have f and g are differentiable and g prime is not equal to 0, on the open interval that contains a, uh, except possibly at x equals to a. Now, here is the second condition. Uh, suppose that the limit as x approaches towards a of f of x is equal to 0, and limit as x approaches towards a of g of x is equal to 0. Or it could be the case where the limit as x approaches towards a for f of x is equal to positive negative infinity, and at the same time, the limit as x approaches towards a of g of x is equal to positive or negative infinity. Uh, then the conclusion according to L'Hopital's rule is this. The limit as x approaches towards a of f of x divided by g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches towards a of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. Now, you're wondering, okay, well, why is it that uh, this works, number one? And number two, why in the world would I take the derivative to make my limit more complex to solve for uh, the actual limit? Well, uh, here is going to be, uh, let me kind of go to one of these examples and kind of show you what I mean then, okay? Now, let's take uh, an easy one for the time being, okay? Let's go ahead and take this right here, believe it or not. This is actually not a bad problem. Um, here's what uh, L'Hopital's rule says. First, look at the problem, okay? Apply the limit to each part, meaning like use direct substitution to see what happens. 
So limit as x approaches towards one of the top. So e to the x, uh, or sorry, e, e times x uh, minus e to the x divided by limit as x approaches towards one of the bottom, x squared minus one. You'll notice according to direct substitution, you're going to get e minus e divided by uh, one minus one, which gives you zero over zero. Right there, that gives us an indeterminate form, uh, one of the seven deadly sins. In fact, zero over zero is going to be very, very common in this case. So if that ever happens, then that means now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule says this, hey, if I want to find the limit of this thing that we have right here, all we have to do is go ahead and take the derivative of just the top equation. Okay, so the top part, if I just take its derivative, it's going to be e minus e to the x because the derivative of e to the uh, e to the x is itself, and the derivative of e times x is supposed to be e divided by the derivative of the bottom equation. So the derivative of x squared minus one. So that's going to be equal to two x. So now uh, I can solve for this limit problem. And whatever the answer is, uh, that's also going to be the limit of what I was trying to solve for originally. So now let's go ahead and see what happens when I plug it in. Uh, if I plug it in, then I'm going to get e minus e divided by 2. So then that means that we have now 0 divided by 2. So my limit is equal to 0 then. Okay, so that's how L'Hopital's rule work. Let's go ahead and try it with this guy over here before we do the derivation of it. So once again, we're going to go ahead and use direct substitution uh, to see if we get an indeterminate form. So limit as x approaches towards 0 of a to the x minus 5 to the x divided by limit as x approaches towards 0 of x. And by the way, do we have to actually write the limits on both top and bottom like this? The answer is actually yes, uh, because if you do not show that you get an indeterminate this way, then that means it's actually wrong then. Okay, so let's see. According to the top, that's going to give us uh, 1 minus 1 divided by 0, which comes out to be 0 over 0. So that means that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's go ahead and write that okay. Now let's go ahead and take the derivative according to L'Hopital's rule. So limit as x approaches towards 0 of the top part, the derivative of the top part, that's going to be 8 to the x, there's a self, multiplied by ln of 8 minus 5 to the x multiplied by ln of 5. Remember, these are supposed to be exponential functions, so those are its respective derivative. All divided by the derivative of x is just equal to 1. So now, once again, we're going to go ahead and plug in 0, and then whatever we get for our answer, well, that's going to be our answer then. So in this case, uh, we're going to get, if I plug in 0, uh, 8 to the 0 multiplied by ln of 8, minus 5 to the 0 multiplied by ln of 5. So 8 to the 0, that's 1. 5 to the 0, that's 1. So my answer is ln of 8 minus ln of 5 then. And that is going to be my limit in this case. All right. So now did you see how uh, the L'Hopital's rule work? Uh, can you apply to these top two equations over here? The answer is yes. Uh, you can definitely get uh, an answer via L'Hopital's rule for these expressions then. Now let's talk about how come it actually works then. Okay, so here is actually going to be the proof of the L'Hopital's rule. Um, so you know, if you like, to, if you're one of those people that like to see how hot dogs are made, this is basically the time. So what I want to do is uh, think about my conditions over here, uh, mainly these guys over here. Okay, the limit as x approaches towards a of f of x is equal to zero. Limit as x approaches towards a of g of x is equal to zero, and so forth. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to show that this limit right here, the limit on the left is the same thing as the limit on the right. So what that means is I'm going to go ahead and start by uh, using my formal definition of derivative to figure out what this guy is going to be. And that's this over here. So starting off, we're going to say limit as x approaches towards a of f prime of x uh, divided by g prime of x. I want to show that that's equal to uh, in the end, limit as x approaches towards a of f of x over g of x. Okay, so this is basically my end game. That's what I need to show. Now, for starters, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply direct substitu substitution. Assuming that g prime of a does not equal to zero, then according to direct substitution, we're just going to get f prime of a divided by g prime of a, supposedly. 
Well, what I want to do is I'm going to rewrite each one of these as my formal definition of derivative. So f prime of a, I'm going to write it this way, f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, whereas g prime of a, I'm going to write that as g, prime of, as g of x minus g of a, all divided by x minus a, writing them in their difference quotient form. Uh, hopefully you guys can recognize them. Well, if I write it in this form uh, and I do a little bit of algebra, you'll notice that once I flip the fractions, the x minus a's should cancel out, giving me x, uh, f of x minus f of a on the top and g of x minus g of a on the bottom. And at that point, that's where we say, hey, if you remember, the limit as x approaches towards a of f of x is equal to limit as x approaches towards a of g of x is equal to zero. So these guys, we can go ahead and say that's equal to zero. This guy is equal to zero. And there we go. Now all we have left is just f of x divided by g of x. If you're wondering, well, what happens if the limit as x approaches towards a for f of x and g of x is equal to infinity? Uh, it turns out that it's going to be the same thing, but the, and the work is actually, actually going to be the, the same idea. Uh, nonetheless, it's still going to work out. Okay. Well, there you go. That's going to be our proof. Now let's go ahead and look at some more complex examples of L'Hopital's rule and see how they actually work out. So let's say this time we have limit as x approaches towards infinity of x to the power of 1 divided by x plus 1. Okay, first I'm going to go ahead and try to do a direct substitution and see what I get out of this. If I do so, you're going to get infinity raised to the power of 1 over infinity, which is the same thing as 0. So in that case, you can see that this is an indeterminate form. So that tells me, yeah, L'Hopital's rule is going to be okay for this. But then you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, I don't actually have a L'Hopital's rule set up because in order to use L'Hopital's rule, I need to make sure that I have a um, quotient set up. I need to have a numerator. I have, a, have the denominator. Uh, we can get that happening. We can get, definitely do that. So here's what we'll do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that the limit that I'm trying to solve for is equal to some number C for the time being. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and take the ln of both sides. So ln of c is equal to the limit as x approaches towards infinity of ln of x raised to the power of 1 over x plus 1. Sorry, my ln looks kind of weird. And according to the exponential property, I can take then the exponent and put it in the outside or as a multiplier. So ln of c is equal to the limit as x approaches towards infinity of 1 over x plus 1 multiplied by ln of x. And if we just kind of reposition things a little bit, you can see now we have limit as x approaches towards infinity of ln of x over x plus 1. And right there, that is our quotient form that we can now attempt to use L'Hopital's rule. And it turns out that no matter how you uh, play around with something, if you get an indeterminate form, uh, the result is that it will always be an indeterminate form one way or the other. So here's what I mean. At this point, we can go ahead and say limit as x approaches towards infinity of the top divided by the limit as x approaches towards infinity of the bottom. And you'll notice the top part, you're going to get infinity over infinity, which is still an indeterminate form. So it goes to show if you have an indeterminate form to begin with, you're just going to end up with another indeterminate form uh, one of the basically seven deadly sins, and it doesn't matter how you play around with it, it's never going to change. So now we're going to go ahead and use L'Hopital's rule then. Okay, so L'Hopital is going to be okay. So with this part, let's go ahead and apply it then. So on the far left, we have lim uh, x, sorry, ln of c is equal to limit as x approaches towards infinity. The derivative of the top is just 1 over x because ln of x divided by the derivative of the bottom x plus 1. Well, that's just equal to 1. Well, that becomes something pretty simple for the most part. Limit as x approaches towards infinity of 1 over x. Well, that is going to go towards 0. Now, doing the transitive property, going from the far left, which says ln of c is equal to 0. And I want to solve for c because that is my original setup then that means that c is equal to e to the 0, which is equal to 1. So that is going to be our limit then. Okay? So the idea is if you don't have something that looks like a quotient, you need to change it so that it looks like a quotient, so then that way you can use the L'Hopital's rule. All right, let's take a look at the second example over here, which is kind of the same idea. 
here you can see that we do have a quotient, so we can actually go ahead and see what happens when we do a plug it in. Uh, again, by direct substitution, because that's always the first thing I'm going to try, right? That's the easiest way, right? If I get something that's a numerical value, uh, a real number, then we're pretty much done. But if we don't, then we have to do some work. So plugging in zero, we're going to get square root of one minus square root of uh, one all divided by uh, zero. So that gives us zero over zero. So yeah, that checks out then. Okay. Um, so, you know, once again, just writing it out using indeterminate form, we're going to go ahead and say limit as x approaches towards zero of the top. Okay. M and then minus this thing. And then all divided by limit as x approaches towards zero of x squared. And that is actually what I really should have wrote to begin with uh, before I wrote this. And that is more the formal way of doing it. So right there, that means that we can go ahead and say L'Hopital's rule. Okay. So you can go ahead and say indeterminate form. Indeterminate form. Or you can say L'Hopital's rule. They'll accept either one. All right. Now let's go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. Limit. As x approaches towards zero, ooh, all right, get ready. So the derivative of the top, the first part is going to be one over two times the square root of one plus x squared, multiplied by two x because of the chain rule, right? The inside you have one plus x squared, minus one over two times the square root of one minus two x squared, multiplied by negative four x, uh, again because of the chain rule, all divided by uh, the bottom part's derivative, x squared, which is going to be equal to 2x. We're going to clean this up, and let's see, and hopefully some things will cancel out. Uh, let's see, the top part, I see the 2s are going to cancel out. I see this guy is going to give me a 2, and this negative and this negative will make it positive. So, uh, we're going to give now the following then. Limit, as x approaches towards 0, of x divided by the square root of 1 plus x squared, and then plus... 2x divided by the square root of 1 minus 2x squared, all divided by x. And before you start screaming, hopefully you'll notice that there is an x on the top, there is an x on the top, and there is an x on the bottom. So we can literally just go ahead and divide through. So now if I divide through by x from both top and bottom, we hopefully get something that we can just plug in. So 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared and then plus 2 divided by the square root of 1 minus 2x squared, all divided by 1. And now when x is equal to 0, we're going to get 1 over 1, plus 2 over 1 divided by 1, so the answer looks like it's going to be 1 plus 2 divided by 1, so the answer is equal to 3. Okay? All right, so that is going to be a probably more difficult problem then. Now, let's look at a couple more, and then that will probably do it then. The next one, here we have x times this thing right here. And again, we're going to go ahead and see if we have some sort of indeterminate form that we can possibly work with. Uh, let's see. Maybe what we can do is write it as a fraction first, and then afterwards see if we can apply L'Hopital's rule then. Um, or if you want, you can just go ahead and plug it in. Either one actually should be okay. So first off, if you're thinking, okay, if I'm going to see L'Hopital's rule, I need to write it as a fraction, then why don't we go ahead and do so? Okay, limit as x approaches towards 0 of e to the 1 over x minus 1 divided by, now this guy right here, I'm going to do a little bit of trick right here, and write it as 1 over 1 over x, because technically it's the same thing. So right there, now we have our quotient, which then says, hey, we can go ahead and try to apply L'Hopital's rule. So now, if we look at the top, limit as x approaches towards 0, of e to the 1 over x minus 1 divided by limit as x approaches towards 0 of 1 over x. And right there, before you start saying to yourself, oh, I'm just going to get some sort of infinity over infinity, you actually don't, okay? The problem is, if you look at each part, it's actually undefined. Look at the bottom part, 1 over x as x approaches towards 0. Depending if x is approaching towards 0 from the left, you would actually get negative infinity, x approaching towards 0 from the right, you get positive infinity. So that means that this guy, the limit, does not exist. And then on the top part, same idea. As x approaches towards 0 from the left, uh, e to the 1 over 0 from the left, that's like saying e to the negative infinity, that's going to give you 0 and then minus 1, uh, which is equal to negative 1. But 
x approaches towards zero from the right hand side, you're going to get e to the positive infinity, which is infinity minus one. So that is like saying going towards infinity. So both of these limits actually individually does not exist. And unfortunately, dNe divided by dNe is not one of our indeterminate form. So the conclusion is over here, as tricky as it is, the limit actually does not exist because we cannot apply the L'Hopital's rule. Okay. All right. So here is going to be our last example. Uh, limit as x approaches towards zero of x squared divided by one minus x, cosine of x. Since it's in a fraction form, we might as well just go ahead and directly jump into splitting the limits. So limit as x approaches towards zero of the top divided by limit as x approaches towards zero of the bottom. And when we plug each one in, you're going to get zero divided by zero. So that is going to be my indeterminate form. So that means that we can go ahead and use the L'Hopital's rule. Now, according to L'Hopital's rule, the top part, the derivative, is going to be 2x. The bottom part, its derivative, that's going to be equal to 0 minus minus sine of x. So that's just going to be plain old sine of x. At this point, we usually say, OK, let's go ahead and plug in 0 just to see what we get then. And now this is a little bit tricky because look what happens when you plug in 0 over 0 you're going to get 0 over 0, which is, again, an indeterminate form. So does that mean the limit doesn't exist? No. The answer is you have to do it again. You have to apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. So one more time, let's go ahead and apply L'Hopital's rule. Okay. This time, we're going to have limit as x approaches towards 0. So 2x, its derivative, is going to be 2 divided by sine of x, its derivative, that's going to be cosine of x. So now when we try to plug in 0, it should work out. So you're going to get 2 divided by 1. So the answer is equal to 2. So it goes to show you that, you know, when you plug it in the first time, uh, if you get another indeterminate form, then you have to keep going with L'Hopital's rule as many times as it takes. Uh, if it's the case where you get a finite number, then you're pretty much done. But if it's at any time you don't get one of the seven deadly sins, then that 